Daniel Cormier was talking to his partner, R.C., about what should be next for Islam. And Daniel prefaced it. He said, hey, before he even gets going, he says, hey, people are going to be upset with me here. Some of my own friends are going to be upset with me here, but I think. So right, so right away, he's got me curious, right? Right away, the fact that the big bear was offering an apology before he even said it, he's got my attention. I'm thinking, well, what could he say? If I was to guess, I thought that he was going to say Oliveira. And while the rankings support it, not to mention all the winds to be appear to be blowing in that direction, I can share with you that's not the sought-after match. That just isn't the sought-after match. Justin Gaethje knocked, as far as an argument goes, knocked it out of the park when he simply said, you don't stop Dustin Poirier and not earn a title shot. You got all sorts of arguments, five different directions you go with everybody. For Justin Gaethje, the defense rests, right? That is all that you need to hear. So this is what I think the Big Bear is going to say. And Daniel actually went in a totally different direction. Did you guys know who he said? I'm bearing my lead a little bit. Do you know who he said? For Islam, Daniel, if he had the power, inserted... Conor McGregor. Now, Daniel, and don't lose me here. Don't lose me here, Cam. Okay? I'm going to get to a point in just a minute. But Daniel stated because of the star power, because of the backstory, because of everything that Conor and Khabib created and left unfinished. And Daniel's not the only one that believes that was unfinished business. Dana White himself was very open when he was attempting to renegotiate with Khabib about doing part two with Connor. Very, very open. Dana had even shared, it was a clip that they put out on the internet. He had even shared with Khabib some numbers of a fight. I want to say it was like Connor versus Poirier, but he's sitting there watching and, he, and Dana's sharing that with him. Listen to how well this did. So just imagine how well you and Connor would do. It was something along these lines, whether it wasn't the Poirier example or not. Dana was very open when he wanted to bring Khabib back. And don't, don't forget how that all happened. Like, John Jones gets hurt three days ago. That date stays preserved. Two new athletes comes in and an interim belt comes up. Yuri Prohaska was hurt for seven days. They took the belt out of him. Jamal Hill had two and a half weeks. What's that? He about 17 days. They took the belt off of him. Khabib. A man of his word, a man who you can trust and take his statement to the bank, unlike any other, retired in front of the world. They didn't accept the resignation. Do you guys remember this? Remember when Khabib retired, he said, I'm done, and fully meant it? And everything's clear in hindsight. I understand that. Like, looking back, it was very clear. But at the time that he did it, do you remember when they, they wanted to do an interim belt? They wouldn't even accept the belt back. They wouldn't even take Khabib out of the rankings. They wouldn't even... Stop listing Khabib as the champion of the division. Even when he walked away, he says, I'm done. He starts getting into promoting. Starts doing Eagle FC events. I mean, just by example, they kept the belt on him. They kept him in the rankings. They would not accept him. Khabib kept saying, take me out of these. I'm no longer your champion. I happen to have your next champion. I have the heir apparent to my throne. My brother, my pupil, Islam Makhlchev, and they still want to take the belt off Khabib. I'm just, I'm just asking, do you guys remember this? Because that does tie in to the point that Daniel's making about unfinished business with Team Khabib. And even if it can't be him himself, it translates to his heir apparent Islam, particularly if we can get Khabib involved. If Khabib was willing to do interviews, if Khabib was willing to come out and corner, just by example, I mean, I fully understand Daniel's point in terms of the business, I fully understand his point. I don't know that I buy into the idea that Connor versus Islam is a larger spectacle than Connor versus fill in the blank. I don't know that I believe that. I don't know that the style that Connor brings, as great and talented as he is, juxtaposed against the youth, the momentum, 
and the style that Islam brings. I don't know that you could turn enough people's heads. I don't know if you could get the folks at DraftKings to be any closer than seven to one. And when you have odds that far, it doesn't lend to a wonderful night of business, though it would certainly be record setting for Islam because it would involve the guy that has all 10 of the top 10 largest gates and pay-per-views of all time. What I hope you guys took away from this, okay? You heard all the things that Daniel said. I just said them for you. I hope you're hearing what Daniel didn't say. It is very unlikely that somebody of the prestige, the mindset and the respect of Daniel Cormier, who was on a very show on the worldwide network of ESPN that brandishes his name, DC, and that he would make a statement that is so unlikely to come to fruition unless he was attempting to serve his teammate. And I bring that to you with no evidence that that's true. By the way, I'm, I'm guessing it's speculated, but I believe that's the fight that Islam wants. And that would be interesting to me. You call Conor McGregor anything you want, but to call him scared as it has to do with fighting is fiction. I don't know that I believe that you could call Conor McGregor a lightweight. I don't know that he will ever in his life again, particularly his competitive life, weigh 155 pounds. I am light on that idea. But if, in fact, Daniel brought this to the table, because whether it was Coach Javier Mendez, whether it was Khabib, or whether it was Islam himself, told Daniel, this is the direction we like to go, and we just don't know how to get there. I would find that interesting, because one thing that we don't get from Islam, and I feel as though Islam is serving us in, in, in tremendous ways, Islam is a young man who I would hope my son will find so my son can look up to. There's nothing about Islam that if my son began to copy, I wouldn't be anything but pleased and relieved at his choice in character. But one thing Islam doesn't give us is a clear and direct answer on who he'd like to fight next. Part of the code, part of the Nurmagomedov code that extends to Khabib's late father, rest his soul, is competitiveness. And part of abiding by that code is you do not call your own shots. You do not call people out unless they are in front of you. If you're a champion, you could call for another champion. If you're a champion, you could call for somebody if they weigh more, by example. If they're ranked higher, by example. But that's very hard to do when you're somebody like Islam that's on top. It's just a very hard thing to do. So even if he was to hint in that direction, to come out and actually say it, it's one thing we don't get from Islam, and I would be curious. I would like to know what he wants to do. I knew for sure he did not want to fight Volkanovsky the second time, which is why I respected it so much. It's why I appreciated that he went out and did it anyway, because it's about competitiveness, whether I want to or I don't want to. It doesn't have anything to do with, am I going to? So when Daniel made the comment, and Daniel wanted to put the fight together between McGregor and Islam, my question is why? Was he operating alone? Was he a lone wolf with an idea and didn't mind putting his name on something that he knows won't come to fruition? Or was he speaking on behalf of a teammate? And that would change things. I don't believe the UFC is ever going to bring Conor McGregor and Islam Makhlchev together. I don't believe that's going to happen. I do believe the statement I just made and the prediction I just gave you that it won't happen is going to look very differently if Islam publicly comes out and calls for McGregor and McGregor accepts that challenge. 